evening, folks. Dr. Freedom, Worthy times of Dr. News. News so incredible. News so stunning. Stu, news so vivacious. It's clean. It's rare. It will take you there. Yes, it'll make you feel like you're high on Zydrate. What am I talking about? Sorry, only if you've seen the movie Repo, the genetic opera, we have any idea what the hell I was just talking about. What does this have to do with Doctor Who? Not a damn thing, but I still love that movie. But we got a lot of stuff to go through really quick. Now, I was wanting to do a live stream tonight, but like I said, I, I just haven't had the time. They've had us on six-day weeks like crazy at work, and I'm trying to get Comes the Imperator Chapter 7 done because it's already I wanted it out like a week or two ago. But the thing is, you know, work is eating all my time. And by the time I get out of work on Saturday, I'm dead. And it's like, oh, then I want to get the podcast restarted. And plus, we're having a lot of fun doing a lot of different subjects, you know, especially I wanted to get back to Doctor Who related stuff. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw this out there. If you have an idea for a pick three, because there's, a, I have a few more I might be contemplating, go ahead and throw it at me. We'll talk about it and maybe we'll do it. Because I think we're going to take a two week break so I can get all this done. Also, that'll give me a weekend off when I ain't working as I'm off next Saturday. Next Saturday, I'm off. And, oh, God. But, okay, let's get to the news. Let's get to what you're concerned about. And hopefully you folks who are out there unliking all my videos 15 times, I love you. That's all I can say. Okay. But let's get to the news. Let's get there. Okay, first up, let's run on over to Twitter. Apparently, a fan survey was sent out. This was sent to Girly Letters. And... I, I really enjoyed what he had to say. I often wonder how relevant, useful these surveys are since Series 11 is now more than halfway through filming. Really? Now, keep your eye on that one because there's, like I said, there's a story going on around that. that oh, sorry. Well, if you saw the last one, you've already been spoiled. But, okay, just to give you an idea. And, you know, it's for, for, all right, we'll go into that one. In a, well, yeah, that's right. I already got a thing up for that. So, just to give you an idea. Yeah, that they are sending surveys out. And the thing is, why would you do a survey? You know, if you're thinking about doing this, put it out halfway through Series 11. Don't make any sense. But, okay, let's move on. All right, get out of the way. I got the drop-down menu in my way. Right, there we go. Okay, Peter Capaldi, Peter Capaldi's final episode, Twice Upon a Time, was meant to actually be a half hour longer than it was. Now, a lot of you folks, if you're out there, and they, they, they dropped all this – pictures afterward and we were seeing a lot of imagery and scenes you know involving the episode the 10th planet or that serial i mean and it's funny because then we didn't get to see any of it and they went out and rebuilt you know you know literally rebuilt all these sets right down to spec you know the original mondasian cybermen the arctic station all that stuff and then yet oh guess what it none of it made it onto the air but Okay, da 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 ha 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 da da da. Okay, sure. Moffat and the production team ended up with a lot more material than usual, with the screenwriter revealing that he was forced to cut nearly half an hour from the finished episode to make it fit within the running time. We cut a half hour of time. Yeah, say he said in a YouTube interview to promote the new range of target novelizations he was involved with. Um, then he goes a bit more into it, but the reason I'm gonna save you some time here. And you know, even half an hour, Davey asked, he goes, yeah. Yeah, it was longer than Dunkirk. I mean, actually, I mean the historical event, not the movie. Now, it was very long. And the thing was, remember, um, Tenet's swan song, the second part of Tenet's frickin' swan song was 75 minutes. You see, yet Capaldi's, it has to be cut. So hopefully we'll get an extended cut maybe in the future. But if you want to see where this came from, right over on YouTube, somebody's put up this interview. Matter of fact, it's the Doctor Who official channel, I believe it is. And that's Tom Spilsbury there interviewing Steve Moffat and Russell T. Davies. And if I remember correctly, this is where these quotes came from for the Radio Times article. So if you want, go ahead and just go over here and have a sit down. It's only going to take about 16 minutes of your time. And it is an interesting interview and conversation. So it's kind of weird. Look at how tall RTD is. You know, it's kind of weird, man. It's like, ugh. I think even I had to go, you know, it's like the Jolly Whales Giant, man. It's like the Jolly Whales Giant. Ah, the gay Jolly Whales Giant. Mm. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. So, good be sure to go to y'all. Give this a look and a listen. Moving on. Okay. Now, I remember that the one of the original scripts, as used by William Hartnell, went up for auction. The auction closed out at around 6,200 pounds. That's right. 
It has sold it that much. And this, of course, script belonging in the show's first time where William Hartnell was lost in the time vortex for 55 years before ending up in Dudley. Now, it was found at Hartnell's cottage in Mayfield, East Sussex, by a developer who gave it to his grandson. Doctor in the Tribe of Gum aired on the 23rd of November, 1963, and was expected to fetch between 5,000 to 7,000 pounds. But, yeah, but if I remember right, with fees and all that, it's going to come out for the guy who bought it at around 7,500 pounds. So, yeah, I thought it would go for a bit more than that, especially with this, you know, having Hartnell's original notes and all that on it. But it's you know, glad to see this particular relic is going to somebody who's going to probably take damn good care of it. So moving on, of course, Dr. Magazine number 525 came out yesterday. Okay. And this looks into a lot of things. You know, of course, Michelle Ryan, Will Oswald, the time team has been changed. And, oh, boy, have we heard about it all day, about the time team being changed. I only got one thing to say. Like I said, you know, more power to these kids. And once again, I stress the word kids. A lot of people have been throwing fit because of age. And the thing is, to be tr tell you the truth, I can understand they're trying to bring in younger fans to the show, especially now that it's moved on, you know, 55 years. But they have not a single person on the time team older than maybe 30. I think the oldest is 26. That kind of makes me wonder. Not you know, like I don't want to sound mean, like a mean old coot, but not one of these kids was even alive when this show was still on the air, the classic series. Matter of fact, the 90% of them weren't even alive when the show made it ended in 89. But you know what? Like I said, I don't subscribe to the magazine. I really don't. I just mainly get tidbits here and there from different articles, plus stuff people pass to me from it. So more power to them. Like I said, it's, not, it's no skin off my rear end. But it, it's just the fact that they talk about being a diverse cast, yet does the word ages I mean anything to you? I, I, I got to say it. Okay, and also you get little these little preview screens if you go to this article. Don't worry, you will go to this article because the link will be below in the description box. And what they're talking about here is these are cut scenes and all that. This was the original cut ending from Unicorn and the Wasp, where they went and met a much older Agatha Christie. And this was you know, and this was the alternate ending that they didn't use. So you're gonna learn a bit more about that. The fourth Doctor Scarf, yada yada, Planet of the Dead, of course, Michelle Ryan, all that. So, bam, 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 there you go. Here, here's the Doctor Magazine. I hope you all go enjoy it. Remember, it is already out, and it's priced at £5.99. Moving on. And this is the one that if you don't know about this, you've had your head buried in a volcano and listened to your own brain boil out your, the front of your face. I'm not kidding. This has been all over the place. River Song will take on the Masters. That's right. Jeffrey Beavers. Derek Jacoby. I hope you're sitting down. This is what's going to really kick you in the butt. Derek Jagby, Eric Roberts, and Michelle Gomez. Roberts has not portrayed the master since 1996 in the TV movie. Once again, this brings further canonization of the television movie. Oh, sorry. Had to do it every day. <laughs> Just the mess was the most out there. All right. So River Song would face off against four incarnations of the master, they should have said. And this will be the Bechdel test, the animal instinct, life and death, the lifeboat and the death boat, and concealed weapon. Of course, there's the author's name, Jonathan Morris, Roy Gill, Eddie Robson, and Scott Hancock, respectively. And here's some little nifty stuff from Nick Briggs, Jason Hag Ellery. And this will be the Diary of River Song Series 5. Will be av is available for pre-order now for 23 pounds or on CD and 20, 20 pounds for the download. It can also be purchased as a bundle uh, with the Diary of River Song 4 to be released in August 2018. And at the price of, here's all the you know, price of 45 pounds, which ain't bad, 40 for download. Um, remember, go to bigfinish.com and all that for these. But it's just amazing that this is going to be such an incredible story, you know, for the Masters. You know, especially with Eric Roberts stepping back in. You know, Julia Roberts' brother. You remember him? Big finish. Speaking of stuff that's going on, uh, Six Doctor meets the 80s style Cyberman. Um, this is, of course, going to be Hour of the Cyberman. And if I remember correctly, we're, 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 all right. 
He will reveal what has happened to the new unit team since the events of the Fifth Doctor and the Heliax Rift, and it's going to basically continue on from that. Now, the Heliax Rift was not a bad story. I listened to that a little while back. Also, if I remember correctly, oh, heck, why, not, why isn't it listed in here? So, there it is, Duh, right in front of my face. All right, David Banks reprising his role from the 80s as Cyber Leader and Mark Hardy as Cyber Lieutenant. So, interesting stuff going on there for you 80s folks. That's remember, folks, all the old people should be heard, not seen. Oh, God, I had an ageism reference. Oh, no, I'm not moving. Energy of the Daleks coming out on final. That's right. Exclusive deal with Sainsbury Supermarket. Energy of the Daleks, produced by Big Finish Productions, will be available for the first time on vinyl record. From the 25th of May, Sainsbury will be stocking a strictly limited pressing of Energy of the Daleks on a blue 180 GM of heavyweight vinyl. This will be available in participating stores only, limited to 1,500 units. All right, so here's all the da 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 and if and now it really, it really, it, there you go all the stuff and basically they're encouraging you to say look go back and grab some more of the fourth doctor adventures here on the website so wham 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 here you go interesting stuff going on vinyl pressings look at that Ooh, that reminds me of my mom dad's elvis blue, moody blue album okay moving on <laughs> doctor who castle near cowbridge went on it has gone on the market penland castle on the vale of Glamorgan is now not open to the public, but is now on the market for a mere one million pounds. That's right. As well as Castle Ruins, dating back to 1135, it also features a grade two listed mansion's house with eight bedrooms. Oh, no, I'm fading. It's, oh, no, not him. Not again. A 72-acre country estate near Cowbridge contains rolling lawns, paddocks, and a woodland. Anthony Clay from real estate agent's Knight Frank said that Penelin Castle is one of the most important houses, if not the most important house, in the Vale of Glamorgan. Oh, God. I faded into Robin Leach again. Oh, man. So, not like any of us are going to afford this sucker, but I found it interesting. But maybe you could, because someday, look, they're looking for assistant script editor for Doctor Who again. Weird. I could have swore this was up before. The closing deadline on this is the 13th of May. If you think you've got the stones, go check this out. All right. So, all right. Sorry I had to hurry up a little bit on this one, but like I said, I've had my time's really been eaten up. Um, like I said, I would have loved to have sat down and finished Comes the Imperator tonight, but the problem is, guess what? I got to go to work again in the morning, which means I got to do an all nighter on Saturday into Sunday morning, and I might have it pressed out. Uh, I got like two of the big scenes are done. And like I said, I would have liked to have had it out like two weeks ago because I know there are some folks who listen to the audios out there and enjoy them. And I really enjoy, we really enjoy doing them. And, you know, like I said, um, we're getting to some really weird things that are going to happen in the story. We've already had a major betrayal in the story. You know, for you four or five guys who are listening to, you know, Dr. Freedom and Eric, the audio adventures. Well, folks, I'm getting out of here. So take care. Ta-ta. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope you enjoy your weekend because I'll be working. 